You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Is your pet stressed out? Does your pet need annual vaccines? Which pet is best for a child? Would you know if your dog was in pain? Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor, where you'll learn everything about keeping your pet healthy and happy. From pet care, pet meds and grooming, to pet food, pet insurance and dental care, this is the place to find out everything there is to know about pet wellness. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets because it's your pet. Health matters. Please welcome your pet doctor host, veterinarian media consultant and veterinarian, Dr. Bernadine Cruz. At least once a week, I have a client tell me they wanted to become a veterinarian when they were young, but never pursued the career. They just didn't think they had what it took. There are so many tweens and teens who are starting to wrestle with the question, what do you want to do when you grow up? Many may entertain the idea of becoming a doctor of veterinary medicine, but they also have doubts about, what does it take? Could I handle the sights, sounds, and smells of being around animals? What options are available if I like science, but want to do more than tend to the traditional dogs, cats, horses, and birds? How do I go about getting hands-on experience? Dr. Chris Carpenter is the founder and director of an amazing program called Vet Set Go that incorporates his degrees in veterinary medicine and his membership in the National Science Teacher Association. It's a unique and great way for tweens and teens to explore all that veterinary medicine can be. We'll be right back after this short break. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. People say less is more. At Red Barn, we think less is better. It's what you won't find that sets our natural premium pet food apart. No byproducts, no corn or soy, no fillers. Just the natural ingredients your pets need to live the healthy life they deserve. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Try our chicken rolled food as a meal or shred it as a topper. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Dr. Carpenter, thank you so much for being with us today. As a kid, boy, I would have loved to have had a program like this. You know, it's why I created it. I had the same feeling. Uh, Vet Go is really there to give everything that... I wish I would have had when I was an 11-year-old and I raised my hand, or actually I walked up to my mom and said, I'm going to be a veterinarian. I guess the two major things it gives is both encouragement and then shows how they can get out there and explore their dream right away. It's interesting, talking to so many of my colleagues, I think a lot of us felt that we wanted to become a veterinarian or at least go into some type of medicine when we were really young. I know I probably made the idea of becoming a veterinarian. First, it was an MD, maybe, and I will blame that wonderfully on my eldest sister's now husband. She's much older than I am and got to know this pre-med student who I fell in love with, and so did she, and then watched him go through medical school and going, ah, this is awesome, and then realized, hmm, I don't think I want to become an MD because all they do is take care of males and females, large and small, variations on the theme, but ah, being a veterinarian, I could do a little bit of everything. It is. It's a wonderful profession, and I think what differentiates it from a lot of other professions, although medical doctor might be the exception, is that we make our decision early on. In a poll we did nationwide of practicing veterinarians, we asked them what age were they when they decided to become a vet, and 65% said they made that decision before they were 13 years of age. And I think it's because the calling and love of animals and also of science that makes us make that decision. And I think That's what makes it so unique. There aren't many other professions where someone's making a decision. You don't see a lawyer or an accountant making that decision before they're 13. And it also presents problems. Um, When you decide to become a veterinarian, you need to volunteer and get animal experience. But because um, so many humane societies and veterinary clinics have 
concerns due to liability reasons, there aren't many options. And that's really the essence of Vet Set Go, to come up with all the ideas and share them with all the aspiring veterinarians that are now between 9 and 14 years of age and show them what they can do right now to explore that dream. You're so right, because I will oftentimes have, you know, maybe a um Somebody who's in middle school come to the office and go, I would really want to volunteer. I'll do anything you want. I can hold animals and I can clean cages and I can walk animals. And I look at him going, oh, sweetheart, that would just be fabulous. And there's a real concern of you possibly being hurt because it does take training to know how to do this properly. So before we get into that, maybe people would want to know a little bit about Dr. Chris Carpenter. Who are you? How did you get your background? Because I know you're saying science was important to you. You made that decision. But you also decided you wanted to know about the business aspect of all of this. So give us a little bit about who is Chris Carpenter. You know, I guess if I framed up what I am to future veterinarians, I'm an example of all the amazing paths veterinary medicine can take you. I went through veterinary school and came out thinking I wanted to be a radiologist, which is a veterinarian who specializes in looking at x-rays and those type of procedures. And to do that, I actually joined the military where I was assigned to a remote base in Maine, and I took care of about 21 to 30 military working dogs. And Hmm. at the time, I had to manage the clinic, and I realized, you know what, I like the business aspect. And that's when, during the night, I got my business degree. And from there, the world just opened up. I have worked in human corporations to help develop cutting-edge oncology products. Right now, I run a nonprofit that's out there to protect the health of pets. I guess if I would say one thing from my experience to future veterinarians is veterinary medicine is a degree that opens up so many doors for you. If you want to practice, it's it's an admirable way to go, but there's so many other options if you choose to explore them. And I think you were alluding to the fact that you're the director of the Companion Animal Parasite Council. Is that correct? That's correct. I run the Companion Animal Parasite Council, and parasites pose a huge risk to pets. And I could talk for another hour on that, but the trouble is we just don't have every pet. There's amazing medications, and we can protect our pets, and we just don't have enough people doing it. And we're out there making sure everyone understands that just like vaccinations, uh, protecting a pet against parasites is just as important. And it also protects people at the same time. I think that's what a lot of people don't realize about veterinary medicine. And you're so right, Dr. Carpenter, that veterinary medicine, that degree just opens up the door to whatever you may want to do. And you might not even know that you want to do it at this time. But veterinary medicine really takes care of the health of animals, people, and the world. I couldn't put it any better. Veterinary medicine to me is has so much impact on so many people. And that's I guess the other aspect I love about Vet Set Go, um, this concept started when I saw my daughter who was younger than me. She was able to move around an iPad better than I was. And I noticed (laughs) what she went on to is she would go to the YouTube videos and I realized this group explores their world through video footage. And I said, wow, wouldn't it be great if I just went out and filmed veterinarians and what they did and came back because of that reason you said earlier, because so many young aspiring veterinarians can't shadow because of the dangers involved. I said, why don't I let them virtually shadow? So I went out there, and this is what makes it so funny. I went out with my camcorder, and I filmed, and then I learned the editing software and made my own films to show what veterinarians did. And I bring this up because you touched on something I also wanted to share. Veterinarians do science that's at par and sometimes above, I believe, what human doctors do. I uh, have a film of a veterinary ophthalmologist who's doing cataract surgery that I would say is comparable to what any human doctor would do. The quality of what veterinarians do is amazing. You can see I start getting passionate. I could talk forever. (laughs) But what I've loved about this and where it's paid back to me is to watch the people in my profession and the amazing things they do. And I hope that future veterinarians see these same videos that I made and all the new ones that I'm coming up with and see what amazing people veterinarians are and what all the options that are open to them in the future. 
I went to your website, VetSetGo.com, and was looking through the trending on VetSetGo and saying, okay, meet an equine veterinarian, a horse veterinarian, and then go to a vet camp. And, oh, we definitely need to talk about that. And then what is a companion animal veterinarian and sea turtle veterinarian? It's like, oh, my goodness, if you want to talk about something totally, you know, specialized, a sea turtle veterinarian, how did you meet this particular veterinarian? And tell us a little bit about that video. You know, I really have to say this. I love my profession, but every time I go to meet another veterinarian, I'm more inspired. And Dr. Terry Norton at the Jekyll Island Sea Turtle Center is just an inspiration. So he's a zoo animal specialist, and so he specialized in exotic animals, but he really had a passion for sea turtles. And he convinced an island off the coast of Georgia to give him a facility. It was an old power plant in which he would rescue sea turtles. Today, that facility is now the top tourist destination on the island. He Mm -hmm. rescues sea turtles from everywhere on the eastern seaboard. And he is living his dream. He is passionate about sea turtles. You only have to watch him for a few days to see. He cares about each one as an individual. And he's just an amazing person. And to me... His inspiration comes not only in what he does, but how he followed his dream. And again, that's what Vets at Go is about. I just want to say to every aspiring future veterinarian out there, follow that dream because even if it doesn't take you exactly where you think you're going, like myself, it takes you to some amazing places that you'll just, it will just be so fulfilling for you if you follow it. But you got to take that first step. All right, maybe we should back up a bit, Dr. Carpenter. <laughs> we keep talking about Vet Set Go. What is Vet Set Go? So I believe that it's a web community and it's a way for teens and tweens to interact online. Tell us about it. Break it down yeah, for us. The real purpose of Vet Set Go was to answer that question of what do I do now? I'm 9, I'm 10, I'm 11, I'm 12, I'm 13. I raised my hand. I want to be a veterinarian. But as you and I discussed, there's often barriers because you want to get animal experience and you also want to see veterinarians and learn about the science of animals. And what I learned as I've been doing this over the past six years going out and filming is there's just amazing ideas. And the book and the website do a lot of things in common and then there's some differences. What they both do in common is they give you ideas. One thing, and you alluded to it earlier, that is out there that I never had when I was a future veterinarian is there is zoo camps and veterinary camps. Veterinary camps are held at major veterinary colleges. They invite day campers for a week to come and do things that I never did until I was in veterinary school. For example, gowning and gloving for surgery and practicing suturing. It's, it's just an amazing experience to really immerse for a week in what veterinarians do. The other are zoo camps, which I think are just as amazing, especially for those, and there's so many of them who aspire to be zoo veterinarians. They get to, in a supervised environment, see, touch animals, and more importantly, learn the science about these animals. Those typically, again, last a week. Campers are broken down by age group. But that's what Vets at Go, the book and the website do. And I can talk about a little bit more about what each one does differently, but they're designed to give you ideas, to tell you exactly how to do things. In the book, I would call it a more packaged version. And what it allows someone to do is first get the idea, hear about what it is, for example, shadowing a vet, then talk about what's required, what shoes you should wear, how you should go about it. And then I give examples. I think I have two examples of girls in this case who shadowed veterinarians, what they did and what they experienced. And then I go, and this is the most important part, I purposely explain exactly how to do it, how they should write a letter, how they should contact the vet in their area, how they should pick the vet. And then give them templates on letters they can send to the veterinarians. And, and that's what Vet Set Go is as far as a book. It's specific ideas and then examples of people who have done those ideas and then step-by-step kind of instructions on how to do it. So I guess that's where I came up with the title, Vet Set Go. It's really about getting out there right now and exploring that dream and not sitting back and hoping things come to you. That's the essence of it. And I'll pause there in case, in case I just brought up so many questions for you. Well, I love the idea of having it 
a child going in looking, it sounds silly when they're a child, but looking professional. Veterinarians are busy and all of a sudden, you know, I will have a receptionist come and say, there's a young kid up front. They want to talk to you and shadow you. And I, okay, fine. I remember being that age. Let me go up and at least say hi. And if I go up and they look kind of messy and they don't look me in the eye and they don't shake my hand and they don't have their little elevator speech of why I want to become a veterinarian, why I want to shadow you, many times I won't ask them to stay or come back and and shadow me for the day. But those that'll come up and they just have a smile on their face and they're dressed nicely and appropriately for a veterinary hospital and they put their hand out and they tell me who they are and oftentimes have, you know, a letter saying, you know, this is my contact information. I've spoken to my mom or my mom's right here or my dad's right here with me. Those are the kids going, yes, these kids have it together. This is somebody that I'm interested in. So your book, sounds fabulous. This is really training them what to do. That's exactly right. And and I think they don't understand what an environment it is. I mean, these animals many times come to you and they're not feeling well and sick. And some of the things we explain is when you're in that exam room, be quiet, don't ask questions, let the vet do the exam. They need quiet. The animals are nervous. Sometimes the clients are. You hit upon all those factors, and I'm so glad you outlined it. That's what we're trying to show future veterinarians. And we do it through different topics. I mean, for example, humane societies. You can't volunteer when you're young for a humane society, again, because of the dangers. But there's an option I learned about that I had no idea about when I was a future veterinarian is fostering, where you can bring home the young, uh, often very young before weaning type age of pet that are orphaned and take care of them until they're ready to adopt out. And and that's a family process until so we go through all the ways to contact the shelter. But what we wanted to do is give ideas on what they can do. We even talk about taking care of your own pet, picking up that responsibility, which quite honestly is the way I first started getting my animal experiences through my own pets in my own house. And I think that's a big first step for especially the younger future veterinarians. That's fabulous because I know when I have a, a youngster in a room, an exam room, instead of just saying, here's an Etch-a-Sketch, you know, keep yourself occupied, you know, I'll really try to involve them in this going, hey, look, this is probably your first pet. I'll ask questions. Your parents are busy. They're taking care of you and earning a living and keeping a roof over your head. So this pet is now going to be a lot of your responsibility. You're seeing them much more than your parents are going to be. You know know their little quirks and their nuances. So when you see something wrong or different, let your parents know. And here, come up here. Let me show you how to give a physical examination so you'll know what's normal. And then when something's off, you can let your parents know and bring the pet in. And many times I've learned so much more information from these kids that I'll ever learn from their parents because they are watching their pet so closely. Oh, and I wish I had a veterinarian like you when I was younger because that's what I dreamed of. I dreamed of having that veterinary mentor or that person who took the time, who was a veterinary professional, to talk to me like that and let me understand things I could do. You really are the embodiment of what Vets Echo tries to be, that encouraging practitioner who encourages that future veterinarian to take care of their pet and become involved in it. Dr. Uh, Carpenter, hold that thought. We need to take a short break right now. We'll be right back. So sit, stay, tune in. We'll be right back. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. You love your dog (laughs) and getting kisses from them. But their breath can be downright stanky. (laughs) Knock out their smelly breath with Stank Be Gone. Stank Be Gone is made with natural ingredients to eliminate their bad breath while helping to reduce plaque and tartar. Just add a capful to your dog's drinking water. Stank Be Gone is only $19.95. Use promo code STANK to receive a second bottle for just $5. Go to stankbegone.com today. That's stankbegone.com. July 25th, 2006, we adopted April. She's a purebred, orange and white, Brittany. But when she started scratching like crazy, I said to John, it's got to be her food. You know, what you put into a dog is what you get out. We heard this radio commercial, and this woman was so excited about Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. I said to John, I'm getting this. So the Dynavite comes. 
And I thought, a light bulb moment. She loves her dog food. She always leaves a little bit in her bowl. So we added a huge scoop of Dynavite in it, and then we swished it around like gravy. She dove into that bowl. She licked it clean. She loved it. So that's been the routine for almost 10 years. April gets Dynavite for dessert. Her coat is now soft. It's silky. It's smooth. She even walks like a little princess. 859-428-1000. On Dynavite. She's Little Miss Hollywood. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to the Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. Okay, Dr. Carpenter, we were talking all about how kids can get experience. You were just talking a little bit about websites. So when they go to your website, what are they going to be learning there that's different than the book? Because the book sounds fabulous. You know, it's just really step by step. Exactly right. And, and, and it's ways and ideas to get involved. And the website continues with that idea, but has features that just um, can only be possible through the web. And the, the one I mentioned earlier are the videos of veterinarians uh, who really talk about their day. We call it the Meet the Veterinarian section, where they, they describe who they are, what they do, all while the viewer gets to see a typical day for them. Then we actually filmed some case studies. We, we talked earlier about the sea turtle veterinarian. He did something, and I've got to share with you, so many times things come up that get me excited. He did <laughs> surgeries on rattlesnakes, cane break rattlesnakes. It was part huh. of the product. And that video, I still look at it, and it mesmerizes me. Uh, the way he sedates it, the way he brings it, he puts in the, the monitor. Carefully so sedates it. It was just amazing. It was just, I mean, wow. I was, that snake was out on the floor, and they brought it into a tube, and I thought, I don't know if I would be in the room doing that. But it's... <laughs> fascinating thing. And I want, again, I wanted to share all these amazing things vets are doing. But the other features of the website, one that we've just added that we're starting to populate is I use a feature or a website, I should say, called TripAdvisor, which gives you advice on different locations and and has people rate these destinations. We created a TripAdvisor-like site on Vets That Go where future veterinarians can look up by activity. Let's say they want to look up for a, a zoo camp in their area and they're in Orlando, Florida. They can search for that and bring up the options. And so they can search for anything from shadowing opportunities to um, volunteer opportunities. And the goal is that we'll have thousands of listings to make available to future veterinarians. Again, with that whole concept of being about giving ideas and connecting future veterinarians with ways that they can explore animals and ex- meet veterinarians and explore the science of animals. So that's probably the, the, one of the biggest different features. And the other is we have a community, and if you go on the community now, you can see a lot of future vets post and talk about why they wanted to become a vet because I think it's important to interact with those who are like you and those who share your passion. And in our community section, we have a lot of future veterinarians, and now I've got to try to get more veterinarians contributing so that we really connect the two groups. Because, again, one thing I wish I had when I was an aspiring vet was a mentor or someone to talk to me and guide me down the right path. It is so important to do so. I noticed on your website you're talking about you know talking to different veterinarians. You have a Dr. Lynn on your website. Who's yes. she? Dr. Lynn Buzzhart is one of the first veterinarians I recruited. Dr. Lynn has done speaking tours throughout our profession. She speaks constantly at conferences, but she's also been a a consumer spokesperson, and she's a practitioner in Louisiana, just an an amazing person, loves to have future veterinarians in her clinic, and she offered to me to start sharing some of the patients she sees or some of the people who come in and just allow people to get that glimpse of practice environment. And so I'm now on the recruitment recruiting trail for more, and I'll have a few more veterinarians coming in. But my dream for this community section is that both future veterinarians are contributing, whether it be their questions or the things they've done recently, while veterinarians are just sharing almost a day in the life. Because veterinarians forget that while many things are probably so common for them, they are fascinating to a future vet who can't for many reasons, come in and shadow every day. So that's my dream for that community section. And hopefully in six months, uh, it'll come to fruition. And the one thing I always have to smile at, I had gone to your website, saw Dr. Lynn, read her little entry, and thought, oh, that was really very sweet. You know, she'll be having more information. And then when you said Lynn Buzzhart, I've actually worked with her in the past and (laughs) didn't recognize her. So yes, 
what I so enjoy about veterinary medicine is that it is a small community. There are more veterinarians, well, there are more lawyers who are graduated every year in the United States than there are the total number of practicing veterinarians. So it, it's just the numbers are, we're small, but we're a very close-knit community. And I think we all love giving back. So I can see that your group is, your network is just going to be expanding and expanding when more people hear about Vet Set Go. When did this launch? So the new website, and when I say new, it's the, the new name and the new format launched late last fall. And we've been working to get the bugs out, but we announced it to the world, if you will, this January. Before that, uh, and I mentioned, you know, I started with my video camera going out and filming veterinarians. But at that time, I called it, it was named after my Newfoundland dog who has since passed Ichabod. And I called it Ichabod Inc. And it was just a, a site of videos. And, and that it, that was funny because I posted those videos. And I think I would have, I'd be excited if there were maybe three viewers one day. And it grew <laughs> over the past four years into I was getting about 200 vi- viewers a day. And veterinarians who did my videos really loved it because instead of having a person come in each week, they could reach it. For some cases, they could reach tens of thousands a year just by doing one video, allowing me to film them for one week. And so both sides were very happy with it. And since then, as we just discussed, I I um, created the newer version with some additional features and I, I think improved the visual appeal of it. But it's just been, and it is, still remains a moonlighting experience. I'm constantly reminded by my family that it's a huge commitment of my time for no financial gain. But like you said, I have to tell you the most rewarding things in my life have come from this. I really mean that. I have seen amazing people in our profession. It Going to the camps, which maybe we'll talk about, when I went to these uh, veterinary camps, when I see these aspiring veterinarians, I see myself, I won't tell the number of years, but many, many years ago, and it just reinvigorates me. It's really been a great journey. Now, these camps that you're mentioning, Dr. Carpenter, are just not in the United States. If I remember correctly, looking at your website, one of the camps was in Canada. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's the Tim Ogilvie Atlantic Veterinary College camp. And anyone who knows the geography of Canada, I certainly learned it when I visited them. Prince Edward Island is way up in the Northeast, way up there. And it's amazing. You drive over this incredibly long bridge. I went there one summer uh, to one of their camps to simply film it. And again, with the goal of sharing what I found with future veterinarians. But they, I think, had one of the first original camps. I do know that they're one of the most award-winning camps, and the curriculum they have is amazing, and I would encourage anyone to look at those. There are others in the U.S. Uh, There's one at Tufts. There's one at Purdue, Auburn University, and I'm seeing new ones pop up, and I will, of course, share those on my website. But those, to me, are just the nirvana uh, for a future veterinarian. And again, I wish I would have participated in one because you they get animal experience. They get to be around veterinarians. They get to walk through the campuses where veterinarians learn. It just, again, I just think those week-long camps are the perfect thing for a future veterinarian. And that's what I tried to share in my book. With the veterinary camps that you're mentioning, are these for the tweens, teens, or are these going to be just for college, high school, college students? That's what's great about them. They start in tween. And to me, it's where that, because when I first started talking to future veterinarians, I talked to a lot of very young ones, the six, seven, eight, and I learned quickly that they want to be superheroes like Spider-Man <laughs> as much as they want to be veterinarians. They're still kind of in that different world. But when someone hits 9, 10, 11, I think and I'm a great example. When I was 11, I was sixth grade, I knew that veterinary medicine was going to be what I did. And that's what I've seen is that those tween years is when someone really has locked on to it. Answer your question, these camps have recognized that, and one of what they typically what they call the junior camps will start out with the younger tweens, um, sometimes around 13, 14, sometimes going as low as 12, and then they usually have like a more senior one for the older high school students that are maybe uh, more to 16, 17, 18. Another great thing that those camps do is they divide by age group, which I think is essential for either a zoo camp or a a veterinary camp is to make sure you have the campers all in the same age demographic. It really helps. I think they feel much more comfortable being around their age peers, so very definitely. And what I was 
looking at Dr. Ogilvie's is they're working with animals, yes, but they're also getting the science behind it, too. So they're looking at radiographs, and they're looking under microscopes, and they're doing the things that is not just with the live animals. So they realize there is a whole breadth to veterinary medicine. You know, I'm so happy you said that. And my favorite quote that I like to give to future veterinarians is, the people who love both animals and science become veterinarians. Uh, Science, as you know, is the foundational element. And what I try to do in all of the things I post is teach a little science. You know, going back to the uh, rattlesnake uh, surgery video uh, is I posted on there in the article below that snakes only have one lung. And what I love about this group of tweens is they're so anxious to absorb all that they can about animals. And I remember one person posting, and this was on the older site, this is so great. I now know more about snakes than anyone in my class. (laughs) That to me is the future veterinarian. They just want, it's how I was. I wanted to know everything about animals and I wanted to know more than anyone at my school because that was my passion. And to me, this is a great opportunity because as you know, um, maybe there's some who will never become veterinarians, but There is nothing wrong with getting an early exposure to science because it opens up so many career doors, whether you're going to be an engineer, a mathematician, or a or um, a zookeeper, science is just, I, I say this to my daughter every day, I go, science will just open up the doors for you if you keep studying it all through high school. And so I really love, and I'm so happy you brought this up, I really love inserting science in everything I show. Well, that's probably because you're a member of the National Science Teacher Association where you have such passion too. But you're right. I'm, I'm looking at the things that veterinary medicine can do going, the technology, the advances, 3D printers. Okay, we know they're using it on the space station to make new parts for themselves up there because they can't always have it shipped in. But I know at least at UC Davis School of Veterinary Medicine, they've been using 3D printers when they're going to be doing jaw surgery on dogs and helping. There was one poor dog who just had horrible facial injuries. So the veterinary school got together with this technological group there at Davis, not associated with the veterinary school, and said, we need some help. Can you do something with a 3D printer to help us visualize what these injuries are from looking at CAT scans and then make the pieces that are missing because of these injuries going, yeah, I think we can do it. And they did it. And now looking at this dog, you can't even tell. It is just amazing. So you're right, Dr. Carpenter. You might not be interested in veterinary medicine, but maybe you're interested in computers and 3D printing. And there are just so many areas we have no idea what's going to be going down the pike. It's an amazing profession. It just, it really is. And I'm glad you bring that up because I think people would be, and I hope my videos show to those even those who are non, just the family members of future veterinarians, I hope they take time to peek at the videos because our profession is doing some amazing science. And, you know, many of, for example, of the things we're learning for our canine or our dog patients are applicable to humans in oncology. And so a veterinary medicine is just, again, I can't say it enough, just opens so many doors for you. And I I don't think anyone can go wrong with exploring and considering a veterinary degree. And, and as you mentioned, and I don't want to lose that either, it's a small profession uh, and we're all closely knit and I think very proud of what we do. Extremely proud. I'm glad that I'm a companion animal veterinarian. I have enjoyed being able to do media work so I can spread the word and educate pet owners throughout the United States and the world. But, you know, All of this comes down to we're small, we all need to work together, and knowing that veterinary medicine can help humans, can help the world. I wish that before I got into veterinary school, I realized the breath, because it was only after getting in some of what you were saying also, that you realized all these various career paths. We're hearing now about Zika virus and Ebola virus, and veterinarians are on the front lines of controlling those those diseases, the new diseases that are coming out that are affecting human life as well as animal life. 
it's veterinarians who are very, very much involved with this. As you were talking about oncology and cancer, yes, the work that we can do on animals is not giving them cancer. They're spontaneously getting the same type of cancers that you and I are getting. So if we are able to see how it works with pets, then we can use that information on animals and vice versa. I agree. And that's something I hope comes out in some of the videos that I show. And again, the one I, that to me is one of the best examples is when I watched the ophthalmologist doing cataract surgery, I said, that doctor's ability and precision to do the small sutures, to do these delicate, to put in a, a new lens, an interocular lens, is just amazing. And the health that we provide, or the access to health that we provide to pets, it's just, and through numerous species, veterinary medicine, I'm just very proud of it. And I'm certain it's coming out. I'm very proud of it. And I want future veterinarians to see what a great profession they're considering joining. When I was in um, my first year of veterinary school at UC Davis, we had to move from one part of our campus to another and the distance was quite large and we would oftentimes go on a bus. And at that time, the medical school, the freshmen were many times taking the same bus and they would look at us because they knew that we were veterinarians probably because the way that we were dressed and said, well, how come you didn't want to become real doctors? And I think a lot of veterinary, pre-veterinary students are asked that, why don't you want to become a real doctor? And initially we were somewhat taken aback and then realized the perfect answer was, you decided that you wanted to focus on one species. We do them all. And that pretty much caused them to be quiet and didn't ask the question any longer. It is. And people forget that, that we have so many species we work on. And, and the other part is they're just, they're, they're species that have so much to admire. I, I, I'm a big dog lover and I just think they're, they're kind of angels on earth and it's great to serve them because I, I think they provide a lot of joy uh, on this planet. And, and so that's, you know, back to you know why we all do this and why our profession as a whole is so dedicated to sharing and helping others is that I'm very proud of what we do and I think it's a different type of person who decides to become a veterinarian because of that passion that starts early. It's what I noticed. It's why VetSecO was created. It's because I wanted to connect. You know, I felt like a little bit isolated when I was a future veterinarian trying to find veterinarians to connect to, trying to find ideas on how I could get experience. There's one thing I wanted Vets Set Go to do is to say there's so many things. It's, it's where the title comes from, Vets Set Go. Get out there, do something today. Because what I, I also learned in this is when you get out and do one thing, it leads to another. I First, I took care of my pet. Then I started taking care of the neighbor's pet as a kind of what I guess they, today they call it pet sitting. And then eventually, I got my first volunteer. I shadowed a veterinarian, just like you described, brought my letter in, asked if I could do it. And after that, and this was in high school and when I was a bit older, um, they allowed me to work in the kennel in the back. And then I eventually got to uh, work as a technician in the front as I was going through my early years of college. So really what I'm trying to show future veterinarians, if you take that first step, if you take care of your pet, if you go out to a zoo camp, it just keeps leading to other things. And, and that's where the fun begins. And hopefully that, that go does just that, is encourages and then gives examples on what people can do. And listening to this, you know, I'm a grandmother and I'm going, gee, this would be an awesome gift to give to one of my granddaughters or you can give it to a grandson. So if somebody's listening to this going, all right, it's a little too late for me to try to get into veterinary school, but oh, I have a, a niece, a nephew, a grandson. Where can they learn more about Vet Set Go? The best place is vetsetgo.com and the book is only available right now on the website. And it's funny you bring that up because that's actually why I wrote the book is that while I was doing that first website, I had a lot of emails from parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts who said, I have this niece, I have this granddaughter who wants to be a vet. Your website's nice, but I want to give them something in their hands, something they can take and look at. And I've never gotten over my love of hard copy books. And they said, I'd love to give something to them. And so the Vets That Go book was created just for that, that family member that wants to give something to that aspiring vet that they know. And, you know, if you consider the numbers, about one in five tweens wants to be a veterinarian. Most everyone here on your show is, or your listeners know somebody who wants to be one. It's a gift they can give that helps them start exploring a dream. And so that's why the book was created. And again, it's on vetsetgo.com. 
What a great combination, an actual book. And I agree with you. I still love books. And my granddaughters are avid readers. And yes, they're using their tablets, but also they like a book in their hands. So have the new technology, your website to have the traditional technology, a book is great. And you're also, you were given the Mom's Choice Award. Congratulations. Well, thank you so much. And again, I think it's important for a parent because it's not... You know, often it's not just family members, but in some cases veterinarians, they're asked that question and they don't know how to respond. And and what I think what Mom's Choice Award givers recognize in this book is it gives solutions to a parent because I have, again, we've talked about, I have a 12-year-old daughter and she has actually loved horses and loves volleyball and when she has questions about those things and I can't answer them or help her get ideas, it's tough for me as a parent and so I'm always grateful to someone who steps forward and goes, well, here's how she can take that next step. That's what Vet Tech Go is for a parent is you now have that person who's come up to you, your your daughter or your son who says, I want to be a veterinarian. That's what the book is for. So now together you have ideas and as you'll notice in the book, it always encourages the future veterinarian to work with their parents and tell their parents what they're doing so that they can partner and help this aspiring vet explore their dream. Dr. Carpenter, congratulations. This is a fabulous service, a great program, and I would love to get a couple books and I'll keep it at the office. And when these tweens and teens come in to me going, how do I hand them the book? Say, come on back when you're ready. That's perfect, and we'll get you some, and I really appreciate being a guest on your show. My pleasure. You've been listening to Dr. Bernadine Cruz. I've been chatting with Dr. Chris Carpenter, the founder and director of the amazing program, Vet Set Go. Please listen again next week. We'll have more information on how to make you the best possible pet owner. Thanks for listening. Take care. Pets can be a wonderful addition to your life because they're a member of the family. Keeping them healthy and happy is important. Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor with veterinary media consultant and veterinarian Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets. The Pet Doctor, on demand every week, only on PetLifeRadio.com.